Welcome back to the AutoX Show. Now we've just seen the Maruti Suzuki Swift being crowned as the Indian Car of the Year for 2019. Sitting down with me is Mr. C.V. Raman, Senior Executive Director, Maruti Suzuki. Welcome Raman Sang. Hi. Congratulations on the Swift. Thank you so much. So what is it about the Swift that we've seen the Swift take uh, home three iQuadi crowns? What is it about the Swift that is so special? Well, it, uh, it is something which has you know, captured the hearts of the Indian customer right since the first generation. And uh, I still remember and I always quote this that in uh, uh, 2002 when I first saw the sketch of the Swift, uh, you know, it was uh, looking so different, it was looking so sporty and we felt that okay, this is something which may not uh, you know, be uh, relevant for India at that yeah, point of yeah. time. But uh, in 2005 when we brought it, it really caught the imagination of the people and it was, you know, it was fun to drive car and uh, and uh, once the diesel engine was put onto it, it really picked up uh, volumes and then uh, it is, uh, you know, the second generation uh, just uh, took off from where the first generation yeah. was yeah. and uh, it's something which is, uh, you know, made uh, uh, the compact uh, car segment. Uh, uh, but looking ahead to 2019 and 2020, there are a lot of uh, changes on the anvil. Um, in the near term, there are safety regulations that are about to kick in. 2020, there's uh, going to be Bharat Stage 6. Can you just give our viewers a little bit of uh, an insight into what exactly these changes are and how they're going to affect the cars that we buy and drive? Sure. Uh, as the two types of regulations which are coming in, as you mentioned, safety as well as emission. So first of all, on the safety, uh, you know, so all uh, uh, new cars uh, starting from uh, 2017, uh, uh, they uh, had to go for uh, the offset and side uh, impact and 2019 for existing models. And uh, also in addition, uh, the new regulations like uh, ABS being mandatory has uh, now come in. And uh, other uh, uh, features like uh, rear parking uh, assist, uh, and uh, sound warning uh, or speed alert warning, those have also come in. So I think uh, uh, as uh, industry, we have all been working towards it and as Maruti Suzuki, we already have eight of our models which are meeting these uh, uh, safety uh, regulations. And this started with uh, the Vitara Brezza in 2016 when we had, uh, it was uh, homologated for offset as well as side impact. The second is of course, uh, uh, is the leapfrogging of the emission norms from uh, BS4 to BS6. 1st of April 2020 is the cutoff date, date of sale. Uh, all vehicles have to meet uh, the BS6 norms yes. and, uh, and uh, it will actually make uh, the vehicles uh, in terms of emission efficiency uh, much better yes. uh, and the particulate matter uh, is going to be zero for the diesel, uh, almost zero for the diesel vehicles and the NOx also will come down substantially. So do you see the dynamics of the market then changing at least at the small car end uh, quite dramatically because the price differential then becomes uh, very large. Yeah, definitely. Today, uh, I think if you see the industry, uh, the penetration of diesel overall is going to be about 35, uh, 30, 35 to 40%. But uh, we reckon that in uh, post BS6, this is going to come down. The cost of uh, the uh, uh, diesel part train is likely to go up anywhere from, uh, depending on manufacturer to manufacturer, anywhere from 60 to 100,000 to uh, no, thereabouts yeah. and uh, if uh, th that is so then cost the as far as the price to customer is concerned it's going to be about 1.5 times so uh, the current differential of 1 lakh between petrol and diesel is going to uh, uh, go up maybe to anywhere from 2 to 2.5 lakh rupees as we said which may bring down the uh, overall ratios of uh, diesel so uh, the next step which the industry is sort of looking forward to or looking to get some clarity in terms of uh, from the government is uh, from an EV policy uh, standpoint. Um, are we any clearer in trying to understand because uh, you see reports every now and then uh, which try and anticipate what an EV policy might look like and whether hybrids get included into uh, the fold or not. Uh, is there any clarity at your end in terms of what we might be looking at? Well, you know, the uh, uh, electrification of the fleet is something which is important and uh, uh, as I say that uh, energy security and environment are important for India. And uh, uh, looking at uh, the uh, energy security, I think definitely fuel efficiency improvements are required. Uh, they could be, you know, small uh, low-hanging fruit like improving the average speed of uh, vehicles on the road, 
uh, could actually improve the uh, fuel efficiency. Yes. Uh, you know, currently in uh, major cities, it's about 20 kilometers per hour. If yes. you increase it to 40 kilometers, yes. there could be a 35, 40 percent improvement in yes. CO2 yes. you know yes. emission is concerned. So I think these are low hanging fruit. But uh, the other things are that uh, if you have to uh, transition and you have to move from uh, from and improve the IC engines, that's one thing which all manufacturers are going to do uh, going forward. They're also going to hybridize the uh, powertrain uh, because uh, uh, that is one interim step which is there for uh, before we get into the full electric. And the full electric requires uh, infrastructure and also customer acceptance. Yes. I, I think today one of the reasons uh, for full electrification uh, not taking off would be the uh, infrastructure for charging and also the uh, infrastructure for the charging at home. But from a customer point of view also it's about the overall price of the vehicle and uh, unless the battery cost comes down uh, is not ha going to happen. There's been talk of some kind of a breakthrough in battery technology to uh, make EVs um, more feasible going forward. Is there anything that you foresee as, uh, as being a real breakthrough and something that can be implemented in the next few years? I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, the technology, battery technology has evolved over a period of uh, so many years and uh, the costs have definitely come down and uh, the uh, uh, pundits are saying that uh, the cost will come down further yes. uh, and come down to $125, $100, even below $100 yes. uh, for kilowatt. Uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, today if you see the, those metal prices are actually increasing uh, because of uh, availability yes. uh, kind of issues. Uh, that's one part of it. The second part of it is of course as you said uh, technology is changing and chemistry is changing. Uh, so, as the chemistry changes, and obviously the, that's also one benefit which is uh, going to happen in terms of uh, well, how much ener energy density you are able to pack yeah. into the cell. Yeah. So, that definitely helps uh, in doing that. Uh, but uh, I'm sure, uh, I think a lot of work is happening, uh, even on, you know, as you mentioned, uh, maybe solid state and all of that. But uh, we don't think that it's still the last uh, uh, last is heard about the battery technology and that this is the technology and so uh, let's all work on this. Yes. And that's also one thing which needs to be kept in mind that uh, in the long term where one should invest and uh, it's a detail mine definitely the chemistry changes definitely the manufacturing should not really make too much of a difference. Okay. As Maruti Suzuki we are going in uh, and Suzuki is setting up a joint venture with uh, Toshiba and uh, lithium ion batteries in Gujarat. We already announced that. But uh, chemistry changing would not really impact. But if the if the technology itself changes, yeah. definitely there is going to be an yeah. impact. Because that was going to be my last question, is that there are gigafactories being set up, which are these mammoth uh, uh, manufacturing cities almost. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Maruti Suzuki, Suzuki is also investing in uh, manufacturing of lithium ion battery packs. But if uh, either chemistry changes to a point where that manufacturing uh, setup becomes obsolete or if the technology changes, uh, I mean then what happens because there's so much investment and focus taking place today but uh, the belief is that that uh, breakthrough has to come and uh, what happens then? I think that's I think that, that's also one cautious point, ca caution point which is there and uh, uh, today whatever gigafactories are being made I think they're uh, amply uh, you know loaded in terms of from the contracts that they have with yeah. the manufacturers. Yeah. And if uh, India is to go to 10% uh, or 20% uh, yes. EVs, I, I really think that uh, we need to uh, worldwide capacity increase, whether it's for motors or for battery or power electronics, a lot of capacity needs to be built. And if you're looking at the numbers which is being projected, I think a lot more is required to be done. And that's why I feel that there is a ample uh, opportunity available to do that in India. Yes. And so, therefore, that scale is available, and so that's that's uh, uh, that's an opportunity. And uh, I don't look at it uh, so much as a challenge, but as an opportunity. But the challenge definitely is going to be the technology, and uh, the kind of change, or maybe the obsolescence, as you mentioned, that could maybe uh, impact it. But I mean, as you said, it's an opportunity first. Thank you very much for your insights, sir. Thank you. Thank so that's uh, all the time we have for you this week. Uh, remember to follow us on social media for your daily dose of all things automotive. And remember, it's chaos out there. So always buckle up and wear your helmets. We'll see you again next weekend on the AutoX Show.